you have to look towards what this year what kind of impact that player will have on this season of course and what it's going to happen next year. So if you go out and get a player like a Greg Vaughn he's been mentioned a number of times a slugger from Milwaukee. If the Reds can't afford to re-sign him after this year then why would you give up some prize prospects to rent him for two months. And the other side of it too is that the state that the Reds are in yes they're in the pennant race in the Central Division but it's clear they don't have a wealth of players at the minor league level that they can afford to lose two or three or four of them. Here's the three two to Sable two broken bats and two swings. He'll have to get another piece of lumber. He's going to stick with it I guess he thinks it's OK. It sure sounded like he broke it. But for a general manager today it used to be you made a deal at this time of year because you wanted to stay in a pennant race you didn't consider the financial ramifications or the, the minor league ramifications now those two things often come before the final decision Yeah, it was broken and now it's broken for good Miller has it <laughs> one away that was sawed off if there ever was one <laughs> instant kindling right here for Chris Sabo I swear I think it broke on the pitch before that they didn't want to go get another piece of wood. You got a pizza paddle. Now. That, that looks exactly like a pizza paddle. Now you're making me hungry. <laughs> uh oh. It didn't take a lot to do that. They're going to take a look at this bat now. They see uh -oh. something on the inside of this. How about that? That's a stream of cork running right up and down to Chris Sabo's bat. They're going to go Ed in and they're going to eject him from the ball game. Oh, right, that could. Well, let's see. Ooh. Oh, that's bored out. Of court, no doubt buddy. about that. There's a board in the middle of that. How about that? Well, they will. What happens here? Ed Montague will send that piece of bat back into the umpire's room. That will be sent to the league office. So, Chris Sabo. Peering out at Montague. You know what happened though? The Chris Sabo used the, a different bat the pitch before. He was up there, he was jammed on that, and with a foul ball, he broke his bat. So he looked into the dugout, and the bad boy brought out a substitute bat. The bat that he brought out was a corked bat. Whether Chris Sabo meant to use that in a ball game or not, we don't know that. It could be perhaps that he's a victim of circumstance, that he's got a cork bat that they goof around with in batting practice, and that has happened in the past. And he gets caught using it in a ball game and seeing it explode on him. That's about a hitter's worst nightmare if you know you're cheating and then you know you got caught. Again, he did break his bat. And I tell you one thing, Chris, you would figure if the bat was deliberately corked and he knew it was corked and he thought it was broken the time before, he wouldn't even take a chance. He'd get rid of it rather than see it splinter open. Yeah, I, I can't see him intentionally going out there using a cork bat, especially after the bat boy brought that one out there. Look at Montague was out in the infield now picking up pieces of cork. Tom Hallion gobbling some up. All those wine bottles. One word vintage it was. <laughs> Wally Bell will take the rest of it. Here's another look. Watch this ball. Just look at the little pieces of cork coming out of that bat. That is classic. What cork? So Montague has taken that piece of bat in and brought it to the umpire's room. Sable will collect his gear and he has been ejected from the ball game. The way he looked at somebody on the bench and say, I use your bat and you got me in trouble. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad, but they have his name imprinted on those things. 